to Le Monde, bienvenue à ma chaîne That Global Daisy. Je m'appelle Arushi et c'est mon ami qui s'appelle Johnny, qui est français. Ouais. Hello everyone, so you're probably wondering what the heck I'm saying and what's going on. <laughs> This is my first video in French because I have my good friend Johnny here. Tell us about yourself, Johnny. What uh, have you been doing here in India so far? Uh, so I came in India in 2016. Uh, I've been doing different jobs like project management. Uh, yeah, I like the culture and the lifestyle here. I came with my um, préjugé. Mm, préjugé, okay. Um, no problem. Subtitles will go here, friends. Yeah, I discover how is India like when you really live in India. Today, uh, nous allons faire un vidéo uh, très intéressant, je, je pense. So today, in in my video, Annie and I are going to be sharing some stereotypes, French stereotypes, Indian stereotypes, I debunking think, yeah. some myths and stereotypes and hopefully neither one of us gets offended from today's video. Stereotype <laughs> number one, numéro un. It has been thought that the French are known to be very rude and impoli. A lot of people that visit say so. Now this, this is not mm -hmm. exactly what I think. This is just a general stereotype. So what are your thoughts on that, Johnny? So in a way, it is true because French people you will meet while you travel like in other countries, mm -hmm. they are different from the people who live in France. So the one who are living in France and don't travel much because there are a lot of people like that in France, mm -hmm. They are not very welcoming. Like for mm -hmm. example, if you compare French and Germans, Germans they are very yeah. welcoming. They will talk to you, try to understand. But French people, I guess also they are a little bit shy because they mm -hmm. don't speak well uh, English. Mm -hmm. They are not really going to be uh, like, uh, hey, how are you? What are you doing here? Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So if you speak f fluent French, that should be better. Yeah. If you don't speak like yeah. fluent, yeah. So but. Again, it depends. Like also, Paris is very, very like a country where the people, are, uh, a city where the people are very bored, mm. and they will not really talk to you. Like if you go to South, yeah. then people will be more like welcoming. That, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense because I uh, went to France and I only saw Paris. Yeah. And, uh, my personal experience was not like this. Like people were very nice. They were mm. very, very welcoming. Trying my best to speak in French, and they were like really accepting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Understanding of it. They like this mm. kind of behavior. Yeah. Fair. I mean, if you're in France, it helps to know a little bit of French. Right? Yeah. Your turn. <laughs> Stereotype number one. Mm. Uh, everybody in uh, western countries like knows about bollywood okay. so like for us bollywood is exactly how the life is mm. in india so like people are uh, having insane wedding <laughs> they dance all the time mm. they like it's always happy so is yeah. it like that uh no life here is not like bollywood <laughs> like it's a more romanticized version of uh, what India is. Of course, I think Bollywood is only one part of the Indian film industry. Bollywood is known to be grand because I think the general sort of Indian public um, like cinema that's grand and that's like escapist mm -hmm. because India in a country, and you will probably know having lived here for some time, um, has a lot of layers to it. So it can be a pretty complex type of a place to live in and Bollywood provides a little bit of an escape from it uh -huh. I feel like which is why it's so grand and over the top yeah because um, people enjoy seeing that in films uh, but no life is not like that we don't just bring out into song and dance uh, but life here is just like I would say in any other country you know yeah there are moments that are simple and straightforward And uh, there are moments that are lively and uh, just a lot of festivity. <laughs> my turn, my turn. Okay, numéro deux. French are very serious about their filmmaking. Mm -hmm. That's a tough question. Well, actually, I don't think it's about the movies, but it's more about the culture. Like, mm -hmm. we are very attached to our culture and uh, we want to be recognized as a country that the culture is like a priority. Mm. Like we, we want to make the music, like the good music. We want to make the movies, the best movies. Mm. Everything has to be like 
a little bit perfect in yeah, a way. I just think they, they, in their mind, they just think like, let's do it for the French public. Mm. They don't think global. Like, okay. In, in okay. French, they are more like in France for the French people. Okay. Yes. Yes. okay. Indians are very well over, aware of sexual practices mm. because after all, they invented Kama Sutra, right? <laughs> So, <laughs> true. <laughs> How is it really? Yeah, yeah. Whew, throw a heavy one on me. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes. Indians were the inventors of uh, Kama Sutra. I think in today's day and age, maybe uh, there is some like openness about it, especially amongst my generation. Mm -hmm. You know, go back and uh, kind of um, try to bring up these kinds of topics with your families and sort of the older generations, there's still a lot of taboo. I do feel like things are changing like through films and stories that are being told. Back in the day, it was a lot more mm. open. Homosexuality, in fact, was uh, accepted okay. in all forms. And it's depicted in a lot of the art forms mm -hmm. that you see in temples and everything. From what I've read, once the British kind of uh, colonized India, a lot of that that got suppressed and banned. From colonization, a lot of sort of restrictions was influenced and did carry over. So I think it affected a lot of minds yeah. and thinking. I think what's really important is to keep having the conversations mm -hmm. with people in at, in your homes with your friends. It's a natural part of life, yeah, it's natural. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it, there should not be shame uh, against things like sex. Please comment your uh, comments if you want to add on more. Okay, so the French are chain smokers and a lot of French people start drinking at the age of as young as 15. I don't know the exact answer. I would say it's really common like when you go to the family uh, dinners mm. or lunch like Sundays where all the family gather mm. um, they might at some point like when you are 15, 16, 17 they might tell you like okay you can get some wine you can taste the wine just get some wine with water and mm. you can drink okay. Okay. people are more aware about the problems uh, brought by alcohol like the consumption of alcohol. Parents are more conscious about it, concerned about it, and they won't really let the kids try alcohol before they are like 18. Mm. Uh, smoking is exactly the same. Like there is an intensive uh, um, campaign from the government, mm -hmm. but again, like it's you know it's a social uh, how do we call that social activity. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Then if you want to join the group and feel integrated mm. to the society mm -hmm. or the groups. Mm -hmm. The group, then you have to smoke with them. Mm. So that's how okay. most of the people start smoking. But also, like a lot of people are slowly, slowly, like getting high of smoking yeah. like their smoking habits. If number three mm. uh, about India, okay. uh, I think it would be this one. Like for us, all Indians uh, do yoga. That's not true at all. Because I know that a, a lot of the origins of yoga did come up in India. And I think a lot of uh, travelers that come down kind of know about that history um, and they want to really immerse themselves in the country that originated all, um, these kinds of practices. I'm more into meditation. Okay, um, oh yeah, yeah. So uh, my um, morning rituals is uh, I get up and I try to do like my spiritual chanting and stuff uh -huh. and then I do a little bit of Surya Namaskar. And that's about it. But I think there are, uh, there are a lot of spaces in India that provide uh, retreats and are led by a lot of yoga masters which we call like gurus slowly become a sort of a tourist attraction in a sense yeah so foreigners when they come down they gravitate uh, naturally towards that and um, they want to fully immerse themselves in it and they mm -hmm. really believe that all Indians kind of are uh, Do that. into yoga yeah French like to eat a lot of baguette <laughs> which if in case you don't know is this long piece of bread which is delicious regarding food there is a lot of like misconceptions about food like people will think french eat cheese all the time mm. baguette all the time mm -hmm. uh, also frogs they eat frogs traditional families they will have uh, toast in the morning mm -hmm. which is baguette with jam and butter 
Mm -hmm. So yes. yes, but then nowadays, the young generation, they will have cereals and milk in the morning. But we eat bread all the time. But uh, it bread is. for sure. And what about frog legs? <laughs> well, my city is very well known for frog legs. But it's like the very specific... And you're, sorry, you're from? Lyon. Lyon. I'm from Lyon. So okay. this area is very famous for frogs' legs. Mm. It will be available in the traditional, like, historical restaurant. The last meat is, uh, according to what we can read, all Indians getting arranged wedding mm. by the parents. So yeah. they will all get married to what whoever their parents will introduce to them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is hitting close to home. <laughs> so how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not including these things. I would say as of right now, in today's day and age, um, in a lot of ways, arranged marriages, I feel like, are not really working. They don't work. Mm -hmm. I think arranged marriages are also being modified in the sense that parents may introduce you to friends of friends and kids of mm -hmm. their friends, not necessarily force you into marrying them. Yeah. Changed in the sense it's arranged dating almost. Yeah. Almost. Where parents may kind of step in to uh, widen the pool for you okay, and help yeah. you kind of find a match um, from from uh, people that they know and trust maybe. A lot of non-Indians may have, which is that it's forced marriage. Um, I, I don't think that's as prevalent in urban India. Um, mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. definitely in some rural uh, places in India, we cannot ignore the fact that yes, there are arranged forced marriages, child marriages uh, that happen. And it's really, really uh, horrible practices that I'm against. I feel like in today's day and age, there's more uh, choice, I feel like. Indians in general are traveling a lot more, they're yeah. you know, getting more exposure, so they're getting more uh, freedom and more like choice for themselves. Mm -hmm. And that is slowly shifting the way dating and marriages are working. Um, all, the, all the folks in my personal circle, family yeah. and friends, mm -hmm. had love marriages. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm still on the hunt because clearly, clearly that has not worked out for me <laughs> yet. Even with my family, they would possibly uh, let me consider the idea of them introducing me, um, mm -hmm. but they would also be open to me yeah, finding yeah. my own match. It's like more of a, a boat where like, they can put some people, yeah. you will also introduce some person yeah. that you like. Yeah. I personally would want to uh, do things my way. <laughs> final one. Okay, the final uh, one. I think you'll like this one too. The oh, in French. French. In French? Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know how to say this in French. <laughs> I don't know. Les Français, ils sont Très bien à draguer. Also great in bed. Ah, so, oh, so that's probably a myth again. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it from the French himself. It's, it's like one person is like different from another person. So we, not all of course, but like nowadays there is a lot of uh, awareness about like consent, mm -hmm. about pleasure mm -hmm. and all the stuff like this. And obviously we invented the French kiss, so... <laughs> <laughs> did, did the French actually invent the French kiss? I, I guess it's like the French fries. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's not it's French fries. It's just the name. Cool! That's all the myths that we have debunked. Yes! Done. Merci beaucoup, Johnny. Prie. Okay, très bien. Uh, so thanks very much, friends, for watching. Um, I hope uh, I get to do more of these kinds of fun thing challenges and videos with uh, some of my foreign friends. So you can follow me at that global Desi for more travel stuff, more cultural videos coming soon. Thanks very much for watching. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir.